Welcome to another episode of Power Play, a video podcast where we travel the world to explore the hard truths of the energy transition. In episode 10, we explored exponential thinking and its importance in understanding the future of the energy transition. This week, in episode 14, we explore probabilistic thinking and its importance in understanding the fascinating field of climate science. And next week, we'll have another episode on climate science where we consider the predictions of climate scientists on matters such as temperature rise, sea level rise, extreme weather, and other issues. So let's go. Let's start by comparing climate science to another field of science, astronomy. Climate science, like many scientific fields, relies heavily on probabilities and models to understand and predict complex systems. This is because climate systems, much like the vastness of space in astronomy, involve countless variables and interactions that can't be precisely determined at all times. Let's start by comparing two aspects of astronomy, predicting a lunar eclipse and estimating the probability of an asteroid impact on Earth. Astronomers can predict a lunar eclipse with incredible precision, down to the exact time and location, even centuries into the future. For example, the next lunar eclipse that will occur on my birthday, August 4th, is in the year 2259. It'll be a partial eclipse, and it will occur at 2.02 a.m., plus or minus 10 minutes, using terrestrial dynamical time. We can make a prediction with this level of certainty well into the future, because the motion of celestial bodies follows well-understood physical laws, and we have precise data on their orbits collected over long periods of time. For these measurements, the signal-to-noise ratio is very high, meaning that what we're trying to measure and predict is much greater than the uncertainty in our measurements and predictions. On the other hand, predicting the probability of an asteroid impact is a far more complex and uncertain task. This requires considering many variables and uncertainties, like the various sizes, trajectories, and velocities of potential asteroids, as well as gravitational influences from other celestial bodies. Data are sparse, and historical data of Earth asteroid strikes are unreliable prior to the past 100 years or so. The signal-to-noise ratio here is much lower, with a lot of noise and uncertainty in the data and estimates. As a result, astronomers use probabilistic models to estimate the likelihood of an Earth asteroid impact over a given period of time, rather than making precise predictions. So, for example, the probability of an asteroid impact during the next 100 years of the size of the asteroid that's believed to have killed the dinosaurs is estimated to be one in a million, with an uncertainty range of an order of magnitude, meaning that it could be one in 10 million or it could be one in 100,000. So you can see that some aspects of astronomy allow for a very precise prediction with high certainty, and other aspects allow only for probabilistic predictions with much lower certainty. Now let's turn to climate science and predictions of increasing global temperatures. We understand with some precision what's happened in the past on global temperature rise and sea level rise. But what we cannot do is predict the future with the precision of a lunar eclipse. Instead, we can say there's a consensus among climate scientists and their models that there's a high probability that global temperatures will rise by 2 to 4 degrees Celsius by the end of this century. This range accounts for uncertainties in how the climate system will respond to greenhouse gases, how human activities will change, and how natural factors will play out. One major source of uncertainty in climate science is climate sensitivity. This term refers to how much the Earth's average temperature will increase in response to a doubling of atmospheric carbon dioxide concentrations. To reach a consensus among climate scientists, the United Nations formed the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, or the IPCC, in 1988. The primary goal of the IPCC is to provide policymakers with regular assessments of the scientific basis for climate change, its impacts and future risks, and options for adaption and mitigation. They issue an updated report every six or seven years, and the latest IPCC report, called AR6, was issued in 2021. It estimates that a doubling of CO2 concentration in the Earth's atmosphere would result in a temperature rise of between 2.5 and, and 4 degrees Celsius at equilibrium, with a best estimate of around 3 degrees Celsius. This range reflects the combined uncertainties from empirical data, models, and feedbacks. But think about what this range means. 
It means we're trying to predict 1.5 to 2 degrees of temperature change with science that has about 1.5 degrees Celsius of uncertainty. This is a very low signal-to-noise ratio, making our predictions extremely probabilistic. If we then try to make additional predictions about how this amount of temperature change will affect extreme weather, sea level rise, and other phenomena, there are other further uncertainties to consider. The key takeaway here is that in many fields of science, scientists are working with complex systems where exact predictions are often impossible. Understanding the probabilistic nature of climate science is crucial for interpreting climate projections and for making informed decisions about mitigation and adaption strategies. It's about recognizing that while we can't predict the future with absolute certainty, we can understand the range of possibilities and prepare accordingly. So here's our first hard truth. Climate science involves predicting future climate conditions, which is a complex and uncertain task. The IPCC's sixth assessment report finds that in their modest mitigation scenario, global warming is likely to reach or exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius sometime between 2021 and 2042. And it finds that in this same scenario, the world is likely to exceed 2 degrees Celsius of temperature rise sometime between 2037 and 2084. But now, let's return to astronomy and imagine that scientists had determined that there's a high probability that a large asteroid would hit the Earth sometime between 2037 and 2084. Would we start acting now to figure out how to intercept and divert it? Or would we wait until the impact was imminent? Most likely, I think we would take immediate action, investing in research, technology, and international collaboration to prevent a potential catastrophe. We saw in Episode 7 that prior warming periods, such as the medieval warm period, benefited the residents of what is today the Capitol Reef National Park and allowed their new farming techniques to flourish. But hundreds of years later, the Little Ice Age caused them to abandon the region. Modern technology and scientific advancements give us tools that the inhabitants of Capitol Reef just didn't have. We have advanced modern farming and water management technologies. We have climate models. We have global communication networks and other innovative technologies that can help us predict, mitigate, and adapt to these changes. However, the natural world doesn't have these defenses, and many species are struggling to cope with the rapid changes caused by modern climate change. Today, warming is different in its extent, pace, and global impact than prior warming and cooling periods. The changes we're experiencing now are happening much faster and have far-reaching consequences. This rapid warming, driven by human activities, is leading to more extreme weather events, rising sea levels, and disruptions to ecosystems and human societies. And that's what we'll consider in next week's episode of Power Play. Well, that's a wrap. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Power Play. If you've enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, leave a review, and share it with your friends. Stay tuned for our next episode, where we continue to explore the complexities of the energy transition and the impacts of climate change. Until next time, I'm Paul Browning, and please stay informed and stay empowered.